Thank you. Um, so thank you everybody for joining me today. As Igor has said, I'm Leanne Perriman. I'm a senior lecturer at the Institute of Educational Technology at the OU in the UK. Now we're living through times when we're bombarded with false information, information that can influence people's behaviors in ways that cost lives at the moment. And critically evaluating that information is really difficult as the flow of deception is relentless. But there are other areas in which we can use evaluation to help us cope with these difficult circumstances. For example, evaluating what works in education is more important now than ever, especially for people who've had to take their teaching online at great speed. Now we're 11 months into the pandemic and it's a good time to take stock, to find out what's working and what's not working, in which contexts and for whom, as the basis for planning, teaching and learning strategies are adaptable, resilient, effective and sustainable. And this in turn requires robust but flexible evaluation approaches that can accommodate the diversity of contexts in which our students live and study. Now, uh, last year, I evaluated the long term impact of the Commonwealth of Learning and Athabasca University co-produced course TELMOOC which is intended to provide an accessible learning opportunity to teachers, particularly in developing countries, to expand upon their knowledge and skills regarding the use of technology in teaching and learning. Um, my evaluation explored the short-term, intermediate and long-term impact of the course on participants who'd studied the course over the previous three years and also on other stakeholders. Now, um, I needed an evaluation framework that could do several things, that could identify the diverse needs of multiple stakeholders, that could allow for consideration of a wide range of contextual factors that may enable or limit impact, that would allow for analysis of complex mechanisms of change, a framework that would allow for consideration of multiple interpretations of causality, framework that would allow for both quantitative and qualitative evidence to be used as support for the evaluation, and also a framework that would allow the flexibility for iter iterative refinement in light of emergent findings and also for multiple stakeholders in very diverse settings. And drawing on the existing use of the theory of change approach in other disciplines, I adapted the approach to be suitable for a course impact evaluation and to allow these questions to be answered. Now, uh, you don't need to worry about the detail on these slides because they'll be available to download and look at closely. The first stage in the, the process is to develop a logic model and that details the inputs. So that's the resources required to produce the course, the activities, the various components of a course. Now for TELMOOC, that comprised three things. The facilitated course, the course as openly licensed resources and the course as a massive network. Then the outputs um, and the outcomes and also the longer term impact on participants and on other stakeholders and you'll be able to see the detail of this as I say in my downloadable slides. Now the logic model was the basis for a more comprehensive impact based theory of change which is shown here. The outcomes are in the lower level and the intermediate and long term impact is at the upper level, the top of the slide. And a key element of the theory of change are the impact pathways, there's four here. The impact pathways are um, showing where, how impact is achieved in the short term, medium term, and long term. They're structured around hypotheses, grounded in relevant theory about how people learn and relevant literature, including other evaluation studies. And the impact pathways are produced both speculatively in draft form before the evaluation is conducted. And this is a basis for developing the evaluation criteria for identifying the variables to be explored and for selecting appropriate data collection methods. And then they are refined on the basis of the collected data once the um, data has been collected. And I'll take through uh, couple of the impact pathways in detail as an example of how they're built up. Now, the, here's the hypothesis for the first impact pathway. Uh, TELMOOC participants make changes in their own practice as a direct result of their study of the course and any contributory factors, leading to longer term impact on learners 
and on society more generally. Now, here's the mechanisms of change for that impact pathway, going from the activities to the outcomes, the impact on learners' attitudes, knowledge and behavior, and through to the phases of impact. Now, if we unpick this a bit, you'll see that only of the two activities right at the bottom of the screen feature for this impact pathway. That's Helmig as a facilitated course and as a network. And now the outcomes layer identifies a range of knowledge, skills, attitude changes, and behavior changes that are hypothesized to take place for participants, including more experimentation with um, TEL, more use of OBR, and increased reflective practice. The theory of change shows how the knowledge and skills, attitude changes and behavior changes elements are related to each other and ultimately how they may lead to long term impact. Here, that's improved outcomes for the students taught by the TEL MOOC participants, social impact and increased TEL implementation capacity. Going on to the second um, impact, impact pathway, the hypothesis here was that TELMIC participants share knowledge, skills, and resources with their colleagues who are also influenced by participants' change in practice. And this leads to practice changes for those colleagues and then to subsequent longer-term impact on learners and society. Now, the second impact pathway has more going on in the in intermediate midterm impact layer whereby course participants are sharing their knowledge and skills with their colleagues in the short term, and also sharing openly licensed course resources um, with their colleagues. Their colleagues then learn from participants' practice and experiment with the implementation of TEL themselves. And then this in turn is hypothesized to lead to long-term impact on learners, to wider social impact and to improve capacity for implementing TEL. Now, I'll briefly cover the other two impact pathways, and you can look at them in much more detail in the slides and the supporting documents. So here's the hypothesis of the third impact pathway, short and sweet, tell the participants influence institution leaders, leading to institution-wide policy and strategy change and long-term impact on learners and society. Now, looking at the mechanisms of change impact, impact pathway three, it features all three activities at the bottom, and includes institutional policy and strategy change at the intermediate midterm impact stage. Moving on to the fourth impact pathway, which is a quite uh, a long hypothesis that tell MOOC participants learning is enhanced by their being part of a massive cohort of MOOC learners functioning as a community of practice. They gain networking experience and skills and make connections that last beyond their study of the course and are a source of peer support as they experiment with the application of their newly gained skills and college um, and knowledge to their own practice. Now that hypothesis is informed by existing theory on communities of practice and also networking theory. The uh, impact pathway is here in detail and you'll see in the midterm impact layer, there's a stage where distributed peers outside the um, participants home institution are influenced by them and their practices change or they study TELMOOC and the long-term impact remains the same. So um, going back to the main theory of change, on the right-hand side of the, the big theory of change I showed, showed you earlier are the assumptions. Now, these are things that are assumed to be true for the hypothesized impact to be realized and which are a risk to achieving impact where an assumption is not true. And they'll be produced in draft form before an evaluation informed by existing literature and theory and by the logic model. And then the assumptions will be finalized on the basis of the collected data. And there are assumptions for each level of impact. So for the TELMOOC evaluation, these assumptions included things like the availability of technology and internet connectivity, infrastructure issues, institutional culture and support, educators' skills and capacity, and also external factors such as online safety, culture-related constraints on women's online participation, which emerged from the, the evaluation. And um, you can see all of these assumptions on the full theory of change that I'll upload with my slides. Now, um, on the left-hand side of the theory of change, there are three sets of contributory factors. And they're hypothesized to account for some of the impacts identified in the evaluation. And it um, draws on the principles of contribution analysis, which looks not only at the hypothesized impact from a particular intervention or initiative, 
but acknowledges that other factors will be contributing. So it doesn't see impact as an, sort of an end in itself, but looks at what, all the other sorts of things that could um, contribute to impact being achieved. And um, in for massive open online courses is, where learners are in very diverse contexts, that could be a multiplicity of factors. It could be so many different things because the context will be so diverse. And that's why this, this sort of framework allows us to really dig deep into what's going on in specific con um, contexts. So these um, contributing factors are hypothesized in the initial theory of change as the basis for de designing the data collection strategy, and then they're revised on the basis of the collected data. So um, contributing factors for impact for TELMOOC included other professional development that course participants had done, the availability of resources, institutional support, and um, for long-term impact, contributing factors could be things like school attendance, family influences on um, children at schools for either um, whether um, participants are teaching and also community support. They can also contribute to the impact being achieved. So uh, here's the overall theory of change again, and it's, it will be downloadable from my session page. Um, a theory of change approach can be used to evaluate any type of educational intervention where you want to find out about different stages of impact. This could be just, um, just short-term impact. It could be impact that, that it's actually an outcome happening while a course is, is, is underway. Um, and also where you want to find out about the contribution of other factors in achieving or preventing that impact. And especially how a, a, a course or intervention works or doesn't work in different contexts. And uh, if this is especially useful, useful because depending on the data collected, a separate theory of change can be produced for individual countries, for individual sectors, or even for individual case study participants to allow for comparisons to be made between theories of change to look at how the mechanisms change for, for individuals, for sectors, and, and for, for context. And a theory of change can also be combined with case studies of individual learners' experiences. And I, I use this approach in the TELMOOC evaluation, um, which you can see in the, the final impact report, and I'll include a link to that on my session page. And I realize there's sort of a lot to, um, to cover here, but I wanted to give a sense of how a theory of change can be, be used to not only a structure and evaluation, but to make sure all of the factors involved in um, teaching and learning and in achieving impact get considered and especially to allow comparison over, over diverse um, contexts because then not only the methods of an evaluation but also the, um, the findings can be of use to people in other diverse contexts and they can compare their own, um, their own contexts with those featuring in an evaluation as a basis for making decisions about you know, how to further develop practice, how to implement new initiatives. And I think this is going to be continually important in the sort of months, uh, we don't know how far ahead, as we still navigate how to manage um, delivering education through a, a global pandemic. So uh, I hope you found this presentation to be useful. Do look at the supporting resources and thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Lian. Much appreciated uh, for sharing this uh, this rather comprehensive theory of change uh, framework that you've developed. I think that participants here also will need a little bit more time to to help them the digestion of the of the complexity of the framework itself. But it's it's, it's really useful, I think. <laughs> To think about it and as you say like it could be used to evaluate the impact of sort of different educational initiatives right so not specifically on just your MOOCs and there is uh, there is a question from Andy Lane here in the chat window uh, is it it is you is it usual for a project to set out the uh, theory of change before they start against which progress can be evaluated but here you are developing one retrospectively how is it informed or validated by those who developed and then the project. Okay, thank you, Andy, thank you. Yeah, so there was an initial uh, theory of change that had been used for, for the, the course itself. And I picked up on that and used that as the basis for then uh, building a, a course-related uh, theory of change and 
to expand on that to, to produce impact. So yeah, there, there was initial theory of change to start with, and I built on that as the basis for um, developing an impact related theory of change that would have formed the data, the, um, data collection. So it, I mean, the, the thing about theory of change is that it, it can be a multi-stage process. It's, it's best to start it as early as possible. And I personally wasn't involved in the production of, of the tell MOOC, but fortunately had had, had um, something to go on as the basis for, for um, identifying the um, intended outcomes. And also there had been uh, several of, um, evaluation reports covering the, um, the running of the course. So what was happening within the course and um, learners' experiences and also looking at the, the content and the facilitation. So they also informed my subsequent impact um, evaluation rate related uh, theory of change. Thank you for the clarification, Ian. Uh, I'm not sure if there are still additional questions. If there are, we still have another minute or two left okay. uh, for questions. Um, and in the meantime, uh, well, and Paola's comment here, very interesting and complex framework. <laughs> um, so in terms of its practical practical application, uh, Lian, has, has this been already been used to evaluate this framework itself? Has it been used to evaluate specific initiatives as well? Um, I'm not sure if the framework has then been used to um, evaluate subsequent in initiatives. We started using it, I started using it within the, the Open University to evaluate some of our own uh, MOOCs, although, um, COVID-19 and our need to support um, multiple sectors in, in getting their teaching online rather sort of stopped uh, our evaluation activities and we were just focused on <laughs> other things. I think that, that that's common across uh, well, everywhere really that, that the best plans were pretty disrupted. So we're starting to, 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 to use it, but um, that's something we'll, we'll pick up once, uh, once we get a bit more capacity again. Okay, thank you very much. And is this something that you would like the, to encourage uh, the participants in this session or more broadly like to, to experiment with and give you feedback on? Definitely, absolutely. I would, I would love it if, if people to, to, were to use this, to experiment with it, to look at different ways of, um, of working with it, to share findings. I mean, these are, this is only useful. Evaluations are only really useful if the um, findings are shared beyond an institution, but beyond the setting that, 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 that's being evaluated because there's um, there's so much that can be learned, especially from the, um, I think, that the, the barriers to impact that are, are realised by, by diverse people in diverse contexts. And we can only find out how about those, those barriers and how they're being managed uh, by, sharing, by sharing findings. So, yeah, use it, share the, share the um, output, share, yeah, keep the discussion going about this. Great. Thank you very much. Um, so, I think that concludes our time for this for this specific session thank you very much Leanne, again for thank sharing you. thank you i would like to encourage you to to put the, um, uh, the link to this uh, to, your, to your slides or any additional uh, supporting materials as far as the framework is concerned directly under your session description and i'll yeah. just post the link there